That's right, episode 48 of the Rated RR Podcast. We are edging ever closer to that magical 50 and I'm so excited and I'm grateful for all the support our listeners, followers and subscribers have been giving us. This is Yao Raushan together with my usual partner in crime, Rish <laughs> Roshan Rai. Those of us, those of you watching us on YouTube would have already seen the special guest we have lined up. It's a man, I dare say, plenty of people miss in the league. Right before mm. we come to Stipe, Roshan, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm really looking forward to catching up with uh, with Stipe on this one. And uh, again, you know, you mentioned you know, how how um, happy we are that uh, we're getting all that support from the views, from the from the subscribers. Keep going, keep sharing, but also from the people who come onto this show and you know our guests, ex players, current players, uh, and the likes of of Stipe that we've got on. Really grateful to you guys for for stepping forward and, and helping us with these uh, with these chats. Yeah, I think Rosh, you make a fabulous point. It's it's the guests who really get mm. get the listeners excited, right? So thank you, Stipe, for making time. Stipe, first things first, how are you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing fine. It's 11 a.m. here in Croatia, so I'm uh, doing some business around around my house. And uh, in sense of football, I'm still on standby. So yeah, other yeah. than all is good. How, your house looks good, man. <laughs> Uh, looks good inside. Outside, we have some work to do in next one, two months. So I have something to do about it. All so, right, Stipe, it looks right. like you've been uh, busy setting up this new house of yours while you since you left Singapore. What else has been keeping you busy since you left Singapore? Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I think Roshan will sympathize with you there. Oh yeah. man, my, yeah, Gerald. No, my baby face was 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 a while ago, man. But still, it never stops. It's tiring, man. Stipe, you getting much sleep? Uh okay. My wife is taking care about it at night, so I'm sleeping quite well. <laughs> but during the day, of course, there is always a lot of things to do with him. So yeah, it keeps yeah and occupied. Yeah, are, are you still are you still training football wise, trying to keep fit? Yeah, of course. Every day I'm I'm still in training. After I came back uh, seven eight days ago from Romania, I mean I was playing there until I leave, and uh, when I come back, I just continue training. And of course, I need to keep fit and mm. wait maybe for some opportunities if it comes and if it's good, then I need to jump in. Mm. You touched on it there, Stipe, that uh, stint in Romania. You said you were playing up until maybe two weeks ago, until you quite abruptly left Romania. Would you like to tell the fans what happened there? Yeah, actually, that was that was club which is last on table there. And I had uh, I had call from one agent who introduced me the club and they, they changed uh, management uh, project, blah, blah, blah. They wanted to stay in league, so they want to bring uh, seven, eight new players to help them to achieve that. Uh, they say that they will fix financial issues which they have. New sponsors are coming and all this became... I mean, it, it uh, sounds good, but actually it was all bullshit. Uh, when I came there, of course, they needed to bring... Uh, seven eight new players because more than 10 players leave the club because of financial issues and mm. uh, at first you know you know i wasn't really buying the buying the story when i came there when i see but i give them chance you know to to do things right so i was mm. there like two weeks. they couldn't register me because they didn't pay uh some amount to mm. ex players uh and We didn't have coach and all of this. It was like very, oh. very unprofessional. And uh, from first day, I was just thinking about what I'm doing here, and it is better for me to go. But uh, okay, at the end, I stayed there maybe five weeks, mm. and after five weeks, they didn't pay me single, single cent. Wow. And I say to myself that that is wasting of time, and I don't need to. To go through it, I mean, I'm not a young player anymore, so some young players can afford to them that they are not paid, but at least they will play and mm. uh, for like some minutes under the belt in first division. League is not bad, but uh, that club was terrible. Wow, yeah, sorry to hear that. Uh, terrible situation to have found yourself in. Uh, it's interesting that you sort of were able to, to get yourself out and... Uh, 
I think you know it came as a as a surprise to us hearing that news. And what else came as a surprise to us was towards the end of last season when we found out Stipe that the Lion City Sailors uh, were not going to be renewing your contract and keeping you around. Was that a surprise to you, or did you know you know heading into the season that they were going to make some changes in the squad? To be honest, I was always. Uh... I wasn't sure that I will stay there. Well, doesn't matter about my performance or because I knew the direction which club will take. Mm. So, but I mean, I'm professional and always I'm, I was hoping that maybe I can change their mind. I give my best and I mean, we win championship. Their decision was to, to move the other directions. They made some huge signings and uh, after all, I just shake hand with them and we separate way in good manner. I'm still close with all of them, but I need to respect their decision. That's it. So what was it a case of more like you, you perhaps felt like they were going for reputation and the big names rather than how you were performing? Because to me, it looks like they, they kind of miss you at the moment. Uh, I mean, they were looking for some big names, of course. And like you can see, they, they sign big names. Yeah. Um, so um, maybe... What is the way of thinking? I don't know. But that's, that's their decision. That's it. So mm. okay. Fair enough. It's good to know at least that you shook hands on it. You left as a gentleman. Both parties were amicable at the end of it. Stipe, though, I have to ask you, when things came to an end with the Lion City Sailors, did you at all try to stay in the Singapore Premier League? I mean, I, I you know, all of you know that I like Singapore and that I like life there and Many times I choose Singapore over other, other countries in the region. So my aim was to stay there. But to be honest, it wasn't possible at that time because none of the club didn't even approach me yeah. to ask. And I know that this COVID-19 situation affect them financially and, and that salaries are not so big. So uh, I don't know how is it possible even for me to... To stay there so i didn't even have opportunities to be honest mm. to think about it mm. yeah i mean it's interesting because you're not the, the the only one who is sort of you know that we've seen in the spl for years who's now without a contract the likes of madu mohana afik yunos players like that uh, are still not contracted to to any any sort of of clubs uh, do you still keep tabs on the league overall Stipe? yeah i'm watching i'm following and I mean, uh, I cannot watch every game because of the time difference. So mm -hmm. I have some obligations here which I need to fulfill. And But every time when I can, if I'm free, I try to, to watch games, especially Haugang and Sailors, my ex-clubs. So. Uh, but of course, I'm watching highlights, I'm reading comments. I just don't want to engage with some, some comments. <laughs> I try to stay a bit on the yeah. side. Yeah, uh, it, it's good to know that you're still keeping tabs of the Singapore Premier League. The interest remains, especially with your former clubs, uh, Sailors and Haugang. But very quickly, Stipe, you say you've been catching the action, social media action as well. Which players have caught your eye in the start of the season, local and foreign? Uh, I think Shogic surprised me, really, because I thought... I know, uh, because his ex-teammate was with me in Romania, so he told me about him that he's a mm. very, very good player. But uh, I didn't expect him to adapt so fast. And, uh, you know, he's a big guy. It's not easy to play on artificial grass, but yeah. he performed very well. Yeah. So, he, yeah. Uh, I didn't watch too many games, uh, like full 90 minutes. So I cannot, I cannot speak about others. Mm. Are, are you still in touch with... Uh... The guys you were close to, the likes of Gabriel Quack and some of your teammates from Lion City Sailors, perhaps, or even your time at uh, at Haugang? Yeah, I'm I'm in touch with Harris, like Gabriel, Song, with Kiki Krajcek, Shima Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. Fa fascinating to know that you are still in, I mean, I'm guessing some sort of group chats where you still chat about the random things like you, you were when you were playing in Singapore. We touched on it earlier about uh, the Lion City Sailors going big in the transfer window, right? But four mm. games into the season, including that Community Shield, 
they haven't exactly lit it up, I would say. And that's mm. why we made the point that they possibly would be missing you. But as a player, do you think three points is all that matters? Because on paper, they've got three wins out of four. But they aren't exactly entertaining. And that comes with the territory of spending that kind of money, right? But do you think three points is all that matters? I mean, in professional sports, the result is only what, what matters. So after you're achieving three points, it doesn't matter if you play good or well. I mean, I would I would rather play well and achieve three points. Oh, I'm sorry, play bad and uh, get three points than play well and everyone talk about your style of play, mm-hmm. attractiveness, and all this kind of uh, things. But at the end of the day, you don't have points. So this is professional mm. sport, mm. and of course, this is a uh, completely new team. I mean, new team when few few new players come and they are part of first eleven. It's new team. So it needs time to to adjust to each other, to to playing style. And as I said in one comment in, in Twitter, I don't know if you uh, if you saw it. Uh, you can bring the best players in the world, but once you came in Singapore, you need to adjust to weather, to, yeah. to humidity, to playing uh, surfaces, and it's not easy. Mm. It's not easy. You need some time to adapt. So. It's still early days, and you cannot judge judge what you see just from the first few games. Hmm. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And I mean, you bring out a good point about Lan City Sailors. You know, signing lots of players, having lots of depth, competing in different um, tournaments this year, and wanting to make an impact uh, in that as well. Uh, in that, in, in those competitions as well. When you look at this Lan City Sailors side, when you think about Kim Do Hoon, how is he going to try and keep? his players happy? How's he going to try and maintain this, the harmony in the squad? I think he showed already at the beginning of the season that he will rotate a lot mm. to try to keep them all engaged you know, in the game. Mm. But it's not possible to, to keep them all happy. It's just it, you cannot yeah. play 20. So mm. it's not easy. Not easy about, about that. Hmm. Sorry, Stipe, I have to ask here. You mentioned, Roshan mentioned there, plenty of competition. The LCS are obviously taking part in the AFC Champions League. On your part, is there any regret at all that you can't play in ASEAN's premier competition? You were denied the chance. Do you feel any regret? Yeah, I mean, it feels bad, you know, because we, we fight for it and I was hoping that I will be able to, to try to compete there because I have a very good record in EFC Cup and hmm. It was it was step step up, you know. The, you cannot compare ACL and EFC Cup, of course. Yeah. So I wanted to to try myself there to see if I can contribute and on which level I can perform the best. And mm. there is regret. So that's it. That's the part. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, you can't really do too much about it, right? I think he would have loved to have tested himself. Uh... On that stage, I think most players would have uh, would have loved to have that op- had, had the opportunity. Stipe, you've been a part of this, that Lion City Sailors dressing room. There's a big game coming up in the SPL early on, early stages. Albrecht Negata against Lion City Sailors, two sides that a lot of people would the would be thinking would have would have thought that these are going to be the two challenges for the SPL title. Albrecht are starting to come into form now. They scored 11 goals from their last two matches, whereas for Lion City Sailors, as we touched on. It's been a bit of a slow start for them. Tell yeah. us what that, that mood is like in the Lion City Sailors dressing room. You know, what that mindset is uh, coming into this huge match against Elbrex. I mean, when you are in Lion City Sailors, you all only need to think about win. So it doesn't matter against who you are playing. So mm. I don't think there is some kind, some special mindset for some individual game. Of course, this is derby match and uh, you always can uh, uh, expect Talbirex to to put in a good fight and quality game, and they always have quality players. Mm. And maybe it's a bit more tense because of of that uh, fact. Mm. But other than that, mindset is the same. Mm. Is this a squad? Is this a Lion City Sailors squad that is built to overcome perhaps maybe a lack of confidence or a lack of rhythm and momentum? Is this a side that's good enough to win matches? Without playing well, uh, I don't think you can win uh, matches without playing well whole season. Maybe a few mm. matches in season, yes. But if you are not playing well, you cannot uh, sustain that 
throughout the whole season, especially when you have this long season like this year, four rounds of matches. Mm. 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 Yeah, that's you, that's you can, survive, you can survive maybe few two three matches per year, but not more than that. Mm. Yeah, I think we are inclined to agree with uh, Stipe's point, right? Eventually, you might get found out. Okay, let's move it on now to refereeing, which has uh, been in the news lately. Uh, Stipe, before I ask you anything about refereeing or your opinion on it, we know for a fact last year when you were in the league, you were on the end of some bad challenges, man. And Nitin Nambiar, a fan, has actually sent this, that you were on the end of some shocking tackles while in Singapore. He wants to know, are you back to 100% or have there been some long-term issues because of the injuries you picked up? Oh, no, 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 I didn't have. I came back after three weeks already, but uh, season finished already. So as soon as I came back home, I started the training one week after that. So I don't have any problems with it. Mm. Uh, at first, I feel a little bit of pain when I was running, but mm. kicking the ball, turning, sprinting, nothing, no pain anymore. Mm. Uh, did, I think... Did, did you... Personally, I don't like to talk too much about it. There are... <laughs> A mistake, and I don't like to to judge someone like that because you know in whole world you already have VAR and mm. uh, whole world accept it as a normal thing, and I think that is something which is missing in Singapore, to be honest. Mm. But w- w- what about your point of view in terms of did you ever feel like when you're on the pitch that you didn't get enough protection from from referees? Did you feel like defenders could just go about kicking you and and they'd be able to get away with it? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you know you are the bigger than most of the players on, on the mm. pitch, and referee thinks that I can handle the pain. I think, and same same uh, tackle on me wasn't foul, but if I do it, it will it will put given the foul. You know, mm. sometimes even 50-50 challenge because I'm stronger. I push the guy, then they give foul to the guy because I push him. But that's that's completely normal, and. To be honest, I was protected. It's not that they didn't give me fouls. I only feel maybe for this last tackle uh, mm. was terrible. To be honest, yeah. I could yeah. I could really broke my leg. Mm. That is clear red card, and you cannot even think about it because referee was like two meters away. You mm. can see. I mean, when you see the photo, it's. Uh, it's bad. Yeah, we remember that. Yeah, I recall the photo as well. Yeah. worse than just a little small injury. Mm. And all the more, that's why it's good to know there's no long-term damage and you are almost 100% back to full fitness. Uh, and just a quick note on VAR, you mentioned it earlier. In the last few hours, I think uh, FAS have released a statement that they are working to implement VAR in the years to come. Hopefully next season or the second half mm. of this year, we'll watch that space. But at least there's progress on that front uh, to Stipe's point about VAR. With Singapore being one of the Few countries that are lagging behind on that front. Stipe, let's move it on now. And I would like to ask you, what now then for Stipe? You find yourself clubless, you're back home. Are you considering a career away from football, perhaps? Uh, honestly, if I don't find something satisfying, then yes. Mm. Unfortunately, yep. but I need to think about other things now. It's not only about passion, it's about life. And I have wife and kid to take care about. And I would like to play football because I still feel very well. I'm fit and I know that I can perform. Not that I know, but I show that. So, yeah, uh, I'm still confident about it. And I'm waiting for a good opportunity to come. And I'm hoping that maybe in next transfer window, it will be something uh, popping out there. Yeah. Have, you, have you heard anything yet? Has there been anything that, that's come out to you and maybe piqued your interest? About what? Uh, about playing. About any clubs who have come in and maybe spoken to you just casually or maybe just want to get an idea of where you stand. Has there been any sort of thing like that? Any sort of talk like that at this point? There was some kind of, uh, let's say, questions. Yeah. What is going on, where I am now and and so on. But I didn't have any concrete offer yet. So. Mm. And can I ask you, Stipe, if, if you weren't going to be playing football, what is it that, that you, you're going to do? Is that what you're going to ask, Roshan? Yes, you oh, stole sorry. my question. You stole my sorry question. About that. No. <laughs> if you weren't uh, playing honestly, football, Stipe, what would you be doing? I'm not 100% clear with that. I'm, my, my passion is football and 
I would like to to continue something with it, if it's possible, of course. And of course, now I have this house, and during summer season, I have something to do about it because that is main uh, economy here in Croatia, tourist tourism. Mm -hmm. So probably I will I will spend time uh, doing that at first, but after that, all depends of opportunities. I mean, I'm physiotherapist as well, so I wow, can yeah. I can do something with it and. Mm -hmm. But I mean, my I would like to stay uh, in football in some kind of in some way. Just I'm not sure which way <laughs> because <laughs> I don't know if I want to be coach. It's a bit more. Uh, yeah, I am looking for some kind of stability after football. I don't want okay. to change environment every few months or every few mm. years. Mm. Mm. It's not easy anymore. So. Stipe, it's evident that you want to stay in the game. I think the game would be lucky to have a striker of your ilk. But are you at all considering coming back to Asia, perhaps? I mean, that's my aim. That's my main target for for it to come back to Asia because I'm very disappointed with how things are going in this kind of let's so uh, let's say smaller leagues in Europe. There is lots of comments and this mm. financial <laughs> issues <laughs> lots of lies and that's that's something which i i cannot accept anymore maybe before mm. i could but now i cannot yeah i, I mean Stipe, when we put out um when Roshan put out a post about any questions for you you know you're, you're still a very popular guy amongst uh, fans <laughs> here they all want to know actually they're all asking um would you come back to the spl if you were given a chance if there is good opportunity, yeah, why not? Of course. Mm. Uh, on that note, what is it about Singapore that you miss so much? We know you love it here. What is it about Singapore that you miss so much, TP? Uh, to be honest, during winter here, I miss this heat, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Funny to hear because when you are there, you get annoyed because of the heat. But when you come yeah. here, it's cold. Uh, my skin is already dry and... <laughs> wear jacket and these kind of things I don't like because I'm more summer type of the guy and of course uh, my friends there because I spent last five years almost there I have a lot of friends mm. so <laughs> there is many things but that is like main points and I'm, I'm guessing you will you will definitely miss the food as well in Singapore because one fan wants to know what's your favorite local food if there is any typical oh sorry Truffle wantan me, in fact, asking what your favorite Singaporean dish is. Singaporean dish, uh, chili crab. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's dinner time now as we record this, so, you know, I'm getting quite hungry. All right, CP, just a couple more questions from the fans. This one's from Typical Province. He asks, having spent time in Thailand, Croatia, and of course, Singapore, what have your biggest takeaways and lessons been from your time in various different clubs? Uh, there is many lessons to be learned in this kind of when you are changing cultures and countries. Let's say in Japan, I learned how to be more uh, patient and, and disciplined. Uh, in Singapore as, as well, <laughs> it's different kind of story where players are a little bit more relaxed. But on the other hand, they are professionals and they know how to fulfill their obligations. Uh, Thailand, I didn't spend too much time there, but so I cannot I cannot judge just by five months. That's that's yeah. not fair. Mm. But but you learn you learn about certain things in football behind the scenes as well in, in Thailand. I'm sure we all pick up learning lessons from all, all the situations I, that we experience. I think there is in whole world, in, in football world, there is always something behind the scenes which fans doesn't see and uh, you can only understand when you are inside of it. Yeah, I think I can handle it very well because I'm in that for all yeah. my, my life. But let's say my wife, she don't fully understand whole whole picture, and mm. she sees that there are some uh, unfair things going on. Yeah. So you know, she she cannot take it. Uh, so. Is much more difficult than for me. Yeah. 
So, Sipe, so I just want to ask you before Raushan gets to, gets to the last question. I want to leave the last question for him because I know it's something he's very interested in. But, <laughs> but Sipe, I want to ask you, with, with all these things that have gone on, these bad experiences that you've had, um, you've had some great experiences, of course, but just with some of these bad experiences that you've had in football, does it sort of at times leave you a bit like jaded, a bit frustrated, and you think, enough, I, I've had enough. Like, you know, you still have that desire and that hunger to want to, to, want to keep uh, playing. Uh, of course, I want to keep playing. Uh, mm. <laughs> and I mean, until I feel that I cannot play, until my body tells me you cannot, but in my head, I'm still very motivated and uh, I'm missing this kind of feeling, you know, where I'm scoring goals, winning games. Uh, I'm still very, very motivated to compete. That's that's the bottom line. But yeah. of course, you feel frustrated after some, some kind of things happen, but when you wait, waiting, you know, to see pitches more in whole yeah. your life, you always have bad and good moments. Yeah. I'm, I try to think about these good moments because there are many of them. Yeah. It's good to know the motivation levels are, are still high, burning so strongly, and we hope something works out in football soon, man. But just very quickly, moving away from football, Russia makes a fair <laughs> point. I, I love Formula 1. I know for a fact you love Formula 1. You must be excited about the brand new season coming up. It's not a sport. Sorry, Kara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially now, this weekend, now I'm watching this Drive to Survive. Ah, yeah. I see. And I really hope that this year Ferrari can be a little bit more competitive than last year and from what I can see in pre-season testing, everyone are praising their uh, their car. So hopefully they can try to to be what they used to be before. Yeah, I, th- I think you have a future as a Formula One pundit, man. You handled the question superbly. The way you uh, reference preseason testing and all, you should look into it. Stipe, look, we do this for the fans and we want the players to have a platform to be closer to the fans. And honestly, the surprise, I was surprised by the response to the post I put up. So I want to give you a chance to talk to your fans and tell them anything you want about how Stipe is doing and just speak to the fans and tell them what you're going through. I mean, now in the phase of to be dead and good husband, that's the, my main point now. And um, trying to settle some things outside of the football. And of course, training very hard every day and waiting for some opportunity. And if with a bit of luck, I hope that this opportunity will come soon and that I will be back hopefully in Asia again. That's- All right. Fantastic to hear, Rosh. Any closing thoughts? No, man. I think uh, I think that's uh, that's a perfect way to to end things off. Uh, Stipe, thank you so much. It's really great speaking with you, and uh, uh, you know, with Croatia and the tourism and all that, it's a place I would love to visit sometime soon. Uh, and if I'm in the area, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a I'll give you a call. Maybe come and live with you in that beautiful house of yours that you've got. Yeah, let me know, please. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this whole situation in the world settle a little bit because nobody wants war and yeah we want a little bit more secure in sense of the future so yeah 100% uh, been... agree with you I think the world is going through enough to be dealing with anymore so good thoughts always uh, Stipe when you make it back to Singapore chili crab on us thank you so much for spending time to speak to us we've enjoyed your company very much and we wish you all the very best in your search for happiness on the football pitch as well as away from the football pitch. Listeners, subscribers, followers, continue to support the channel and watch us grow. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosh. Thank you, Stipe. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you guys for having me.